Melkoning is a brand name that's synonymous with grinding. They've been in business since 1924, making really nice commercial and professional grade grinders. In the coffee world, they are probably most known for their EK43 line of grinders, which is a very popular grinder. If you've been to a specialty shop, ever, you've probably seen an EK43 grinder on the counter. And while they have been making professional and commercial grade grinders for a really long time, this, the X54, is their first offering that brings the Malconig name and quality to a home grinder. So the X54 comes equipped with a 120 watt motor, which spins 54 millimeter special steel burrs. I don't exactly know what special steel burrs means. Obviously the burrs are made of steel, but I don't know what is special about them, but that is what Malconig has uh, listed in the product brochure and on their website in the information section about this grinder, but we'll dive more into the burrs in a little bit. They also have the idle speed listed as 1050 RPM, and I'm assuming that means when there's no resistance, there's no beans you know, going into the, to the burrs uh, that creates resistance, um, just free spinning and idle, it's 1050 RPM. So Malconig says that this grinder can grind at a speed of one to 2.8 grams per second. At the grind setting that I've been using on this for espresso, I'm getting about 18 grams out in 12 seconds. So that's pretty good and that's faster than one gram per second. The X54 ships with this really nice 500 gram capacity taller hopper. However, you can get this 250 gram capacity hopper as an accessory for an additional cost. Some other nice things that come with this grinder is a stainless steel Malconig branded dosing cup, which has come in handy and I've used it quite a bit. It also comes with two swappable fronts, one that's just kind of a blank that sits in here so you can use the dosing cup and don't have a portafilter holder in your way. And the other is this portafilter holder, which is really nice. It just snaps in there, holds a portafilter really well. Another thing that Malconig has listed as included special equipment is the fact that this grinder is Wi-Fi capable. So there is an app that you can utilize. You can update firmware. Um, you can custom make recipes. You can do some dosing things to kind of figure out how much coffee you should be grinding and where you should be grinding at. And I think there's some handy things on there. However, other than updating the firmware, I haven't found the app to be all that handy in my situation, but your mileage may vary. As of right now, this grinder comes in three colors, comes in this powder coated black like I have here, uh, also a powder coated white and a chrome finish. Malconing is a brand that's known for being very well built, high durability. Obviously they've been making professional and commercial grade equipment for almost a hundred years now. And they know what they're doing when it comes to that. The German engineering is nice. It's probably overkill in some cases. Um, the motor that's in this is very nice and quiet. And so there's just a lot of things when it comes to the, um, you know, the build quality and the durability and the level of attention to detail on certain things for the build that I really like that probably should be expected with a Malconig brand. I really like the user interface on this. It's got a nice, easy to read LED screen. It's not crazy overloaded with a bunch of information on it. It's simple, it's clean. It has four programmable user settings and a manual mode. And manual mode means that you can just hit start and it'll grind until you hit stop again. So far, I've had really good consistency with the timing mode. I have user slot number one set up for 12 seconds, which at setting 1.3, where I have this set for espresso, I get 18 grams out in that 12 12 seconds consistently every time. So one other thing that I really like on the X54 is this detachable portafilter holder. Now there is a blank plate you can put in here when you're not using this that disables this button from being pressed. And you would just use that uh, with, the, with the dosing cup for doing like filter or something like that and not have the portafilter holder in your way. This bottom support piece here, you can move this up and down to accommodate different depth portafilter baskets. Uh, I currently have a spouted portafilter on the espresso machine that I'm using and it fits in here really nicely, no issue. Um, and I don't see why it wouldn't work with any portafilter, whether it's spouted or naked or whatever. Okay. I like that this grinder is fairly quiet. There's a lot of really loud grinders out there. And so this one, um, Malconi claims, comes in under 70 decibels. Now, I don't have like a ton of dislikes because I am trying to come at this objectively and consider who this grinder was intended for in the first place. So I'm trying to let that sort of guide me when I'm, you know, 
using the grinder and giving my thoughts to you on the grinder and talking about my likes and dislikes. The number one thing I've already experienced with this grinder, however, that is a big dislike for me is that it creates a lot of static. I would liken it to my DF64. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the DF64, it is one of the more popular home coffee grinders, but it is known to create a lot of static. And so the first time I ground with this, when I was kind of messing around playing with the grind settings and all that, obviously using the hopper with coffee in it, so I wasn't able to do RDT, which does help with static and also retention, but the whole front of this thing was covered basically from under the chute all the way down to the bottom of the tray was covered with static and chaff and little bits of fines in like the medium filter range with a lighter roasted coffee. Uh, it can be pretty staticky, so something to keep in mind. When it comes to retention, while my retention tests haven't been terrible, I have watched some other videos and heard some things about this grinder having really bad retention, like upwards of a half to a whole gram of coffee. With all the grinding and testing I've done with this grinder over the past few weeks, the most retention I've, I've had so far has been 0.5 grams. Um, 0 0.3, 0.2, 0 0.3 is kind of about the average when single dosing, but again, I haven't been single dosing a whole lot with this. I've kind of just been leaving the small hopper on here for the most part filled up with the same coffee that I've been using to experiment with. It's pretty tasty on espresso. Another thing that I dislike is this bottom tray. And it's not so much that I dislike the tray, I dislike the magnets that are in here. I love magnets and like a lot of you out there probably have experienced a grinder that has good magnets on it, whether that's for holding a dosing cup, a lid on something, uh, you know, magnets are great, they're handy. These magnets, however, on this are just really weak. You can very, very easily, I mean, you can barely bump this thing and these magnets do not hold. You could bump this and if you were in the process of filling up a dosing cup, uh, and you had that on here and you bumped it, you could knock that over and get coffee grounds all over the place. Even maybe one more magnet up here in the front that could give you a third point of contact um, might be better. And last on my list of dislikes are how many beans are stored or are retained, I should say, in the top of the grind chamber when you remove the hopper. So, for example, if you had beans in here, like I have some in here now, and you wanted to swap to a different bean, you would, pull this out to where the trap door is closed so that you can remove the hopper off of here without losing any beans. The problem is in the very top of this grind chamber, there's a good couple of inches till you get to the into the burrs and that whole thing will be filled with coffee. So you gotta scoop out the coffee beans and throw them back in the hopper or put them back in the bag. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. You don't end up getting all of them out. I don't like this. I wish that there was a better way to do that just so you didn't have waste of those beans left in there that you can't fully get out that you then have to grind out. So that's a, that's a dislike. I did mention the burrs a little bit earlier and said that they were 54 millimeter and made of special steel. Obviously, whatever material that Malconing has made these out of, they deem it to be a special material and I'm sure it's probably a really nice material. I actually haven't been inside this grinder yet. I haven't taken it apart. I haven't had the burrs in my hands. I haven't even done any calibration or adjustment. So just know when we get to the grinding, uh, grind quality section of this video that I have not been in this grinder. It's not been adjusted or recalibrated. It is just the way it came out of the box from Malconing. I wanted to keep it that way for this review and for my testing, but the burrs don't seem like anything all that special to me. There are some options out there for 54 millimeter burrs. I just couldn't find anything that was all that great or seemed all that intriguing as far as like an upgrade goes if you wanted to upgrade these burrs. Now, you could reach out, I'm sure, to somebody like SSP or maybe Gorilla Gear or some of the other burr manufacturers and see if you could custom make something. I don't know what that would cost, but I wish these burrs were a little bit more of a common size like a 64 millimeter. There are a ton of options out there for really great, really nice upgraded 64 millimeter burrs um, that are way more capable of a burr than what comes in this. So the 54 millimeter burrs, I'm kind of neutral on. I've been getting okay cups of coffee with it that I've been happy with. I just feel like it leaves a little on the table when it comes to the burr and the grind quality. Malcone claims that this grinder has a 200 to 1000 micron grind range, but I wanted to do my own test to sort of make sure or see if that was accurate. Again, I have not been in this grinder. I have not done any aligning or calibrating or anything with the burrs. And so this is just the way this grinder came out of the box. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a stepless grinder, which means there's no detent. There's nothing to keep you locked into one specific grind setting. I guess I should have had that in my likes is that it's stepless. 
I do like that. And it goes from one to 35, so it's got a pretty big range from fine to coarse, which is what I think their intention was, obviously, with it being an all-around grinder that they claim can grind for basically every coffee brewing method available. For my grind size testing, I tested at every one of the marked numbered, you know, marked locations. So I did five grinds at each one of the grind settings and uh, measured them utilizing the Coffee Grinds app, which I've used in previous videos. The app is not, I don't think, like super accurate, but it's pretty close and I think accurate enough to at least give me some kind of an idea of a uh, range of consistency uh, for these tests. So my grind test is as follows. Setting 35 was about the same as 30. I don't think there's enough of a huge difference that the, the grind, you know, the coffee grind app was able to pick up on that, but I'm, I'm sure there's obviously some sort of difference, but that was just my experience. But that is extremely coarse. It does have the range that they claim. Again, they said 200 to 1000. I was at like 330 to 1400 micron, but again, I haven't calibrated or adjusted this. So I'm sure if I adjust this to where setting one is just off of chirp, I'd probably be getting closer to the grind range that Malcone claims. I did read through the owner's manual specifically looking for something about seasoning the burrs, breaking the burrs in, uh, which is a common practice with, you know, coffee burrs, coffee grinders. Um, but I didn't see anything in the uh, owner's manual about it. So I don't know if they come pre-seasoned. I don't know if Malcone runs a certain amount of beans through them and then considers that seasoned. I don't know, but Again, those were kind of my results with the, with the grind settings, um, and I don't know if the grind is gonna get better over time and continue to get better as the burrs break in and season, um, but that is a possibility. So let's talk about my actual utilizing it, brewing cups of coffee with it test results. For espresso, it's been good. I've gotten some very good, enjoyable espresso shots utilizing this grinder. They're not amazing, but they're good. Does it have the clarity and texture that you would get with a really nice burr set? in a grinder specifically for espresso? No, it doesn't. But it does produce overall, you know, tasty espresso shots. So for that, it gets a thumbs up. And my thoughts on this grinder for filter brewing or pour over, it does create quite a bit of fines, which can lead to muddiness, not an overall great texture, can lead to some sort of weird tasting extractions. You might have some particles that are over extracted. You might have some particles that are under extracted. So the evenness of your extraction isn't great when you have various particle sizes. You've got some bigger ones and you've got some smaller ones. I haven't been like extremely unhappy with the filter brews, but I haven't been happy to the point where I would say, I wanna use this grinder all the time for making filter. I think this grinder is more for the average home user that wants a good, durable, reliable, consistent, and easily repeatable grinder. I don't believe that this grinder is really intended for the super enthusiast, the coffee nerd, the person that's really trying to get every ounce of extraction and clarity and flavor and everything that they can get out of a cup of coffee. I really feel this grinder was not intended for that. There's really no way it could be. Obviously, Malconing is a big brand. They're, you know, a business. They're in business to make money and they want to provide a good quality product to their customers, but they're not going to laser focus narrow down on this particular product is for like the ultimate specialty coffee nerd enthusiast and we're making something that appeals to them, you know, specifically. My thoughts may change on this over time. If I'm correct about the burrs needing a little bit more time to season and break in, if I'm correct about getting in here, doing some calibration, doing some burr alignment, and I get drastically different results, I will definitely make a follow-up video and let you guys know. I don't think that's gonna be the case. If you're looking for something really specialized, this may not be your boy. Overall, I think that the X54 grinder is good. It's a good grinder. Obviously, we've already talked about the quality. We've already talked about the things I like about it. I do think it is a good coffee grinder. However, I think it's more of a jack of all trades, master of none type of grinder. For $749, I think while you may not be able to get as durable and as long lasting of a grinder as the Malcone X54, you're going to be able to get a grinder that will produce better cups of coffee. You're gonna be able to get something like the version uh, for DF64 or the DF64 P or E and upgrade the burrs in that to something really nice and still be at or under $749. So 
something to consider. Do you have any experience with the X54? Do you own one? Have you used one? Do you know somebody who has one? Definitely drop a comment, let us know. Am I way off base with how I feel about this grinder? Let me know. So before I end this video, I do wanna say thank you so much to those of you that have been watching the videos, liking the videos, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Also, thank you so much to those of you that have been leaving comments and interacting in the comment section with not only me, but other uh, watchers of the videos. I really think that's cool, and I think we've got a cool little community going here, so thank you very much for the support there. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know we were doing a 1,000 subscriber giveaway, and we just recently hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel. So stay tuned, because very soon I will be doing the drawing for the giveaway and you could win some cool coffee merch from Bruce Sleep Draw. You can also now win a box of Pear Cupworks coffee that I'm going to be including in that giveaway. So if you haven't commented on that video, make sure you go over there, comment on it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, make sure you're following me and Bruce Sleep Draw on Instagram and you could potentially win. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.